Hello, I'm Natalie Becker. Welcome to It's Africa's Time. Infrastructure development is a key driver for progress across Africa and a critical enabler for productivity and sustainable economic growth. Today, we feature examples of private sector investments in infrastructure in Liberia, Mozambique and Malawi and interview UNDP representatives in each of these countries. We start in Liberia, where ACOM is focused on the country's education infrastructure and is working together with government, the World Bank and NGO Plan International to build 67 schools by 2015. The wars in Liberia destroyed and arrested social development to the extent that uh, the infrastructure was destroyed, uh, the schools were destroyed, and so were the hospitals. Uh, people were displaced. A lot of people left the country as refugees. A lot of professionals in Liberia went to other countries. In the meantime, uh, there was no more uh, services provided by the central government in terms of health, in terms of education. The current development strategy of Liberia is the agenda for transformation. All the major partners in Liberia, the World Bank, the IMF, the African Development Bank, and the United Nations have aligned their development strategies to support that. The priority has been to try and rebuild institutions that were destroyed by the war. And in the last 10 years, I think Liberia has made very good progress uh, in this respect. I think the main challenges to education remain accessibility. You need additional schools. You need to rehabilitate schools that were destroyed during the Civil War. And uh, you need to provide properly trained teachers. Uh, the civil war in Liberia effectively removed children from formal education. In many cases, it turned them into child soldiers. And this has meant that an entire generation of young people have missed education during the formative years of their life. In many cases, they're now parents themselves. I see young people today that lack the required skill set, that moral compass is absolutely skewed, that have no tools for survival in the 21st century. The enrollment level dropped, and many families had to fend um, food, and kids started to become street peddlers in order to get some bread to eat. And then teachers left the country, sought refuge in neighboring countries. School infrastructures were destroyed as a result of shielding. Everything became centralized, with over half of the population living in Monrovia. Now, what happened was that you left schools in the rural areas. They would have teachers. You would see um, a high school student becoming a teacher or a principal in those rural communities, which um, shifted the paradigm in education in Liberia. The GPE, the Global Partnership for Education, uh, helps GPE uh, country members develop and implement their education sector plans. That includes infrastructure and also basic education services where the buildings that the people are, are currently being educated in, like what we've seen uh, today, are in dire need of maintenance and refurbishment. So prior to this program, the conditions were very tough for both scholars and tutors. Our role within the partnership program is to act as advisors to the Ministry of Education, working alongside their staff and, uh, and other advisors that they have as well, who are looking specifically at uh, school grants, textbooks and curriculum, and the training of teachers. The Ministry are also developing a, um, a community-driven approach to school buildings in their more remote areas, and we're, we're assisting them with how this can be set up as well. We look to empower the local people through thought leadership and make sure that the business grows indigenously so we don't have to bring in expats to do the projects all the time. And with that, once the project has been completed, 
the people that remain in country are fully empowered with the tasks that they have to do to make sure that there's the sustainability in education moving forward. Locally we've got one permanent project manager and four construction managers. They're the only expat staff that we have on this project. Uh, the rest of our staff are locally employed and our aim is very much that we will leave a legacy when, uh, when this project is complete. Liberia now has a desperate need of some 1,500 schools. At 67 schools over 40 sites, it's a relatively small pilot study in the scheme of things, but we're also developing a training programme that will encompass all aspects of procurement and delivery. The project is not a standalone project. It does not work in isolation of the government agenda. It's in conformity with the revised education law of 2011. So in, in every sector of the project, we are working directly with the ministry. We are working with them, building their capacity to be able to um, continue um, this process even after the project is over. So the law now says that we have basic education from grade one to nine and then secondary education from grade 10 to 12. Basic education is free and compulsory. There are other barriers, there are other challenges to enrollment to ensure that um, all children irrespective of where they come from, achieve basic primary education by 2015. Our goal is not just to increase access, but also improve on retention and completion at the end of the day. When you couple the poor infrastructure along with the, the natural environment, where the rainy season lasts for six months of a year, uh, you look at receiving over five metres of rainfall during that period, and in extreme cases you can get over one metre of rainfall in a day, then you end up with some extremely challenging conditions, and getting personnel and materials to site is something that we've got to work very, very closely with contractors and suppliers. Sustainability in the developing world is more about creating facilities that the local communities can maintain themselves. So in this case, we've looked very much at what the raw materials are that the local communities have got. And even though we're building to a standard design, we're making sure that the local communities are able to maintain what it is that we've built. People were raped, whether their homes were vandalized, whether um, their families were killed, whether they stood and watched their brother being killed. Those were issues that created so much trauma for kids, whoever they are. And I, I am of the personal conviction that with education, we can begin to learn some basic things about how we healed from those issues and how we, we learn not to repeat the mistakes that we made that led us to the safer conflict. International companies can make a positive and sustainable contribution to the development of Liberia by holding up to their moral, social, corporate responsibilities, by not going the shortcuts, by not bribing people, by not putting profits first, but people first. Africa's natural and social economic potential is, is huge and we're leaving no legacy uh, for the people of Africa, where what we're trying to endorse um, and to fulfill is to create a platform or an environment where our local people get educated so the funds that are created out of the natural resources can be powered back into the country and therefore create knowledge and wealth within the country. With the path we are on with development and with the very, 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 very adequate and sound leadership we have in Liberia under the leadership of President Edwin Johnson Salif, we think that we are on the right trajectory and in the next 10 years, this small nation are going to beam out and shine very, very bright, if possible, the brightest in Africa.